Hi everyone and welcome back. We're on episode 11 of the Learning Free CAD for Beginners. We'll teach you the fundamentals of FreeCAD from a beginner's perspective while we understand the multiple workflows in FreeCAD. In today's tutorial, we're going to be exploring lofts. We're going to be using the part workbench. We're going to be using the loft function in there. The reason why we're using the part workbench is because it allows for open and closed geometry for our lofting. Concepts that we'll be teaching in the part workbench can be applied to the part design as well, as long as we're using closed sketches. We're going to start off with some closed geometry and learn how to loft through a number of circles and understand the concepts of lofting. Later, we'll move on to some open geometry and understand where we will actually use that and how to close that up into a solid. Both these concepts will be used with something called a loft to a point, often used when we're creating boats or something that needs to terminate not our profile, but our vertex. We're gonna be understanding how we use uniform and non-uniform profiles in our loft and how we need to be aware of the edges that are created and how to line those edges up with the different profiles that we use. Also, I'm gonna be offering up some tips on lofting, including a way of guiding your lofts using a skeleton sketch. So let's continue our journey and learn about this feature. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So before we delve into the modeling, we're going to first understand what a loft is. I'm in the sketcher and I'm going to create a number of sketches in here and I'm going to add something called a profile to here. So the profile will be a cross section of the object. I'm on the XZ plane and I hit OK. For the time being, I'm just going to create a number of sketches with circles in them. This will be our profile. If I close that, we've got this circle here. And I'm going to duplicate this sketch multiple times. Come out to edit, duplicate selection, or using the control C and the control V shortcut on the keyboard. We have three sketches. I'm going to separate them with the placement to add a bit of distance between them using the position and using the Y axis. So 50 and this one can be 100. So we separate those out. Let's make the sketch a bit more varied. And we'll take this one and make this smaller. So we've got three different size sketches. Now, if you think of this as a curved surface, this will be the cross sections. So when we loft, what will happen is FreeCAD will fill in material between these and curve these or create a straight surface between these known as a ruled. So a ruled will be straight and normal loft will be curved. To do that, I'm going to use the part. We're going to be using the part design in a moment to do loss as well. Now in the part, I can come into the part loft and I can start adding the profiles. Remember, these sketches are profiles. These have to be in order. Let's show you what happens with just using two profiles. So I'm going to select the sketch, which is highlighting the one on the left here. And then I've got to bring in the next sketch, this one here, and use the right button. You can see we've got Create Solid, Ruled Surface, and Closed. If I click Create Solid, this will be a solid. If I leave it as it is, it'll be a shell. If I hit OK, we've now got this face here. As you can see, we've just gone from one profile to the other. And it's filled in the material in the middle. Now, this surface is actually ruled because it's just gone straight from profile A to profile B. And if we look at it from the side, we can see it's just a straight line going from one to the other. Let's bring in this sketch now. To do that, I can delete the loft or I can come into the loft and look down on the data tab and look down on the bottom 
and we see sections. So you can see sketch, sketch 001. And if I click, we get the button at the end where we can add more. In the link, we just click on sketch two. It highlights when we roll over it and hit OK. Doesn't look like anything's happened. We can see there's a tick by the loft. If I click on the screen, you can see that's lofted all the way to this profile. Now if we look from the side, we have more curvature across here. That can be controlled to some degree by the max degrees. At the moment it's five, and we can set that to two. And the more profiles we have, the more this comes into play. So let's add a few more profiles to this. So I'm going to come into loft and I'm just going to copy this last profile using Control C and Control V and copy it a couple of times. Select the sketch, go into the placement, go into the position and set this to 150 and set this one to 175. We'll now add those to the loft. I'll come out to the loft, have a look at the sections. Clicking the button on the end and just clicking three and four and hit OK. Click off and you can see how we've lofted through those. Click on this loft, go to its max degree here, bring this up. And what I've done is just hit the shortcut for refresh. And you can see if I use the down arrow and using the shortcut for refresh, I'm on Ubuntu, so that's Control R. You can see how that has effect on that surface. So I'm increasing it and decreasing it. And you can see that surface moving. As said at the moment, we've just got a whole object. To make this solid, we just use the loft. Go into the solid and set this to true. So that is solid now. If I use the ruled, set that to true, you can see the effect that we have. So we have a straight loft between each of the profiles. We can also loft to a point. So let's add a point in here. For that, I'm going to use a sketch in the sketcher. Create a new sketch along the same plane, the XZ plane, and hit OK. And I'm going to use the point, create point. We're just going to add a point. I'm just going to add it to this line for the time being. We can see this point in here. I was just hit escape to get the mouse pointer back. This won't show up because this needs to be converted out of construction mode. So points are construction geometry. If I click on it and select sketch, sketch geometries and come into toggle construction geometry, that turns white now. That's no longer construction geometry. I'm just going to move this up to the center and come over to the model. Click on this sketch. Come down to the placement and the position. I'm going to move this into place. So we're moving it along the Y axis. Now we can see that sketch is moving forward. And I want that point, let's say, just in front here. Now we've got that sketch. Let's come over to our main view and add this to the loft. Click on the loft, come down, and we see the sections. So open this up and select that last sketch and hit OK. If I click off now, you see we've lofted to the point. We're still in ruled mode. So if I click on it, come into the loft, come into the ruled, and set that to false, we will get a curve on the end of that. We have to be careful with lofting to a point when we're doing sketches that are not 360 degrees. So we're going to demonstrate that problem next and how to resolve that. And also I'm going to show you a few tips that I've learned in the past of how to position profiles 
quickly and easily so they allow for more flexibility in customizing their positions. So I'm going to create a number of sketches on here, but I'm going to use a different technique to create these sketches. Before you saw me create these sketches and I moved them along a plane. I'm going to use some guidance geometry now. First of all, I'm going to create a sketch for the guide. I'm going to place it along the X, Y plane. Hit OK. Now this won't be lofted, this is just going to be a guide. And I'm going to use a polyline to create a line that I can attach the profiles to. So I'm just adding them along here, like so. Hit escape and we'll delete the redundant constraints. So those redundant constraints are gone now. And the thing is that I have this polyline, so I can move this into position and decide where this is going to start, where this is going to end. I've placed it through the center. I may want to start it at this point. And I can set lengths in here. So I can create distance between the points at exact amounts. So 50, and this one I'm going to put 50 as well. At 25. So we've got this in here. If I hit close, what will happen is we'll get a line with a number of vertices across there. Now it's well worth coming to the view and clicking on this sketch and finding the point size. So coming down, you'll find the point size here and up in that point size to something larger. That means we can easily select these points. Now what I'm going to do is attach sketches to these points that run this way. So we're going to create a sketch and these are going to be our profiles. Now it doesn't matter where we place these. If I hit OK on the XY plane, I'm going to come out to the model and hide that sketch. And I can create a simple boat shape. So I'm going to start with an arc. So this is the first thing I'm going to start in here with. So I'm going to add this in. Say about here, I should use the end point and rim point arc. And what I can do is just attach that to this line, point and line constraint. And we're going to make a simple shape with arcs first. And we're going to use a half shape. I'm going to show you the problems we're going to have with the point. So that's in there. And what we're going to do is just set horizontal constraint in there. So I've got my sketch. Come in and close that. At the moment, it's on the same plane as this other sketch here. And also it's a bit big, so let's bring this down in size, something like, something like that, and close that. We're just going for a simple half moon shape to start with, and then we're going to start adding edges and showing you other things to deal with loss through this. I'm going to attach this sketch to this line. To do that, I'm going to take the sketch, the profile, and come into the data tab and have a look at the support and map mode. At the moment, the support has nothing there. The map mode is deactivated. Use the button on the end. When you click on this field, this button appears, and we select the button. It's now asking us a reference for this sketch. So this is where it's going to be attached. Make sure selecting is being shown here. If not, just click on reference one or whatever is in here and then come over and select this vertex. So this one on the end. What will happen? The sketch will move. So the middle of this will translate to that vertex. Next, select reference two and select this line between these two vertices. Click that. It's going to ask you for the way you want to attach it. Now, if you say normal to edge, this means it's going to go along this edge this way. So click normal to edge. And what we have is that sketch is now attached. I know we're upside down. Here's the top. That's better. The right way it is attached to that line. And we can do the same. Once I OK that, I can copy this sketch, come out to edit. Duplicate, it's going to ask us about 
the other dependency set has because it has a dependency on the other sketch because it's attached to it then it's going to ask you if you want to copy it just uncheck that sketch there and hit OK we got a copy of it and we do the same click on that sketch map mode is normal to edge so let's click on these three points because it's going to be selected against the same vertex so you can see the same vertex is here let's click on that vertex change the vertex now it's here and must remember to change the edge as well so that one there this matters this edge in this one it doesn't matter too much but if you have a curve then it will matter because we need to follow that curve let's hit OK and let's do the other one this time I'm going to go up to edit and copy and remove this sketch here so I've got sketch 2 and hit OK the reason why I did that is because I can now paste this a number of times so control V so that's this one control V again and that's this one therefore it doesn't ask me about attachments it's still in the clipboard I can paste it as many times as I want we want the third sketch map mode set the vertex this one and the line select in this one okay and last of all this one so I come into the map mode where it's got the first one we need to select the vertex we miss the vertex let's try that again select in still let's try that one and line this one as it works let's select that again this vertex got a bit of a problem let's delete these out oh no it's because I haven't got normal to edge so click normal to edge there we go that's in there now and line should be this one in front so that one there sketch edge four. hit OK so now we've added all those profiles on there we're going to adjust these profiles but the thing is is that if we come back to this original sketch this one here and adjust any of these or move this say up here then this will move and we can adjust say this one to 25 and hit OK and hit close and that's become nearer to there so it allows you some adjustments in there it's quite quick and we can place this in formulas or even come in and come down and look at the constraints so we've got the constraints in here if we named these constraints on this one this sketch our one with all the lines in we come down here this is better we've got all the constraints here so you can see the individual constraints we've got 25 25 and we can name these if we want but we can just edit these in here so this 25 I'm going to set to 50 and hit enter and you can see that's moved over here but let's set this one to 50 and there we go move that one out and we can move this up and use the refresh and down and it just makes it a lot easier to move these profiles about let's edit some of these profiles so let's take this one and make this a bit smaller and I haven't got these fully constrained so making my life a bit harder so something like there we go something like that and this one let's move this one in a bit so we've got something like this now when I loft through these we'll get half a shape so come over to the part and use the loft so we can use it from the toolbar here this loft feature and we can add them in so we don't want to add this sketch we want to add this one next one this one and this one and we will create a solid and hit OK so that's lofted all the way through there it's not exactly a boat shape because well we haven't created 
the profiles right really we need two edges in here to allow for that but we'll do that in a moment now if I created a vertex so let's create another sketch over in the sketcher create another sketch on the YZ plane So at the moment that's sitting there. I'm going to move this so it's in front in the placement. Come down and we want to come into the position. Move it along the X. And we'll just move this with the page up and page down. So page down and we'll just place it around about there. We're going to get some odd results. So if I add the point in here like so. And we'll make sure that is construction geometry. So click on it, make sure it's selected and turn it to construction geometry. So now what we should have is a point that sits just in front of here. So you can see that just there. Let's hide this space bar on that one. So let's add that to the loft. So come into the loft, come into the data, come down to the sections, click on that and add that sketch and OK and click off you can see what's happening now so adding that point has created a number of faces and a number of edges the way to solve this is quite easy rather than using a closed sketch and this works in the part if I come into the sketches we we'll use an open one so I'm going to delete the top so we just got this curve. This will go into error until I finish them all because we can't mix open and close profile. So this is an open profile. It's an open sketch. And you'll notice once I finish this, it will resolve. And hit close. Now we've got this shape. And you can see that we haven't got any problems at the moment I've still got it set to close so it's still got back so that's fine so I've still got it set to solid so it's still got a back so it closes the back there I need to if I wanted this say a solid at the moment well it's just a surface with a back or a shell and you can see we haven't even got an edge on this one so we can't actually use this so go over to the loft and set the solid to false then we've got that there so we've got this edge here and this edge running along this way and this edge running along this way so remembering back to our previous tutorial what do we do well we come over to say the part workbench and we'll use this edge and control click the other edge and remember ruled surface Go into part, come down to create ruled surface, create a ruled surface across those. And then we can do the same in here. So this curve and this edge and use the ruled surface. This time I'm going to use the toolbar and close that up. And then we can compound this up by control clicking on the surfaces like so, part, compound, make compound, and then use that compound, come up to part, convert to solid. Hide the compound, and now we have a solid, this one here. Make sure that everything inside is hidden, more well, sketches aren't hidden, so we can get rid of those as well. Just highlight those and press the space bar, and just hide them, and this one. So we've got this pear shaped object here, which is a solid. And we know that's a solid because we can do Boolean operations against those. So we'll set this to 50 and we we'll take that sphere, right click transform and move this into here and hit OK. One I want to keep, the one I want to remove and we're Boolean that out. Like so, it's taken a chunk out of there. So straight away, we can make complex shapes with lofts using that technique. 
let's have a look when we start to add edges. So this is when we have a profile that's made up of more than one edge. So this time we're going to look at profiles that have multiple edges. Create a new sketch along the XZ plane and hit OK. I'm going to create a circle in here which has one edge and then I'm going to create a new sketch make sure nothing's selected just going to attach it XZ, OK and I'm going to create a square so what we've got is one shape with one edge and one shape with four edges now hit close we need some distance away from these two I'm going to go along the Y axis and I'm just going to move this one out. So we can loft between those. If we add these at an angle as well, we can also do that. So if I take this one and change the angle to something like that. And we'll move it down along the Z axis. We can loft between those. We're going to get a ruled surface between those, but that's fine. It's actually better for our demonstration. Go over to the part, and we're going to use the part loft. And I'm going to add both those sketches and make a solid. Now watch what happens. If I hit OK, we've got one, two, three, four, five edges. Now why is that? Well if you look where the edges are set, then if I hide that loft, see this vertex here on this circle, you'll notice that an edge connects that to a projected vertex on this square. And it's the same for the others. Because we haven't got a vertex to match that up with, then we have to project the vertex across here. So we will have one edge and four edges, but when we go to loft and hide those sketches, we will have this vertex that morphs through our profile to the same position as it would be on the circle here. And our edges divide up. Now, if I change this sketch, so this sketch here, and we'll use the splitting tool, which is a brilliant tool over in the geometries and split edge. It's also available from the toolbar here. And what we're going to do is split this, but I need to find out where. Let's just drop that tool by right clicking and come into this sketch press the space bar. I need to find out where the vertices are on this sketch. So there's one in this corner. So we'll split here and there's one here. So split here, one here. Now remember we've got a vertex around here somewhere as well. No, we haven't because we're splitting. So that's fine. The vertex will be created if this was a single circle. We're just creating the four edges now. So there's four edges in this sketch, like so. And what you'll see is these edges will now match up. So we'll have four edges rather than five. Right click, and that's come out of the sketch. And have a look to see what we've got. Notice how the edges match up to the edges we've added to this circle a much cleaner loft. And you have to be careful of this because what can happen is that if we went back to this sketch and move this edge across here and this one up here, we will start to get twisting with this. Let's close this up. Use a quincy constraint and close. And you can see how that's twisted there. I mean, you can use this to your advantage, but this can be a bit of a problem when you're creating curves and you're trying to get a nice clean surface. You have to be careful of this twisting.
So it's a good idea to line up the vertices and keep an eye on your model as you're creating them. So here's another tip for lofting to a point. I have this boat shape here, and this is built in the part workbench. I've fusioned these two together because I've used a mirror. So I've only done one side, so I've done this side. I'll delete that mirror. We've got this loft here, and it goes to a point, and you can see it's a solid. Inside, you'll only see the sketches. We've got no surface in here. So I've managed to create a loft to a point, and you can see all the edges are marrying up. So we look at the vertexes on these sketches. If I bring these sketches into existence by pressing the space bar, so we can see them now, double click on that sketch. We've got a line that's tangent to an arc, and then we've closed the sketch with these two lines here. We're not fully constrained, but that's fine. When I add some angle to it, you can see that all these edges are in line. And you'll notice we've got a little profile at the front, and this is where the magic is. So we follow all these points and basically draw a line between them. We end up, if I zoom into this last profile, you'll see that we've got the same numbers of edges as the other profiles. We've just got a really small profile, which is a copy of this one. And I've just shrunk it right down in size. And you can see that if I double click on this sketch, you can see how much smaller this is to all the rest. And this brings this to a point. So if I zoom into that profile, you'll see a little tiny edge there. So we can get away with that. We can make this smaller even more. But if we come in into something like 3D printing, then this probably will just come to a point anyway if it's that small. So that's one way of doing that. We save time with actually modeling by just creating one side. And all I do with this loft is come up to the part, mirroring, and we're gonna mirror it over the plane. Bring this around, so we're gonna be mirroring it over here. We're mirroring over the YZ plane. So we're mirroring over this line here, this way. So we can drop this down to YZ plane and hit OK. Now we've got our loft inside the mirror. So these two are available to fusion together. And to do that, we just click one, control click the other. So we've got drill into this mirror, span it out, see that loft in there, and we're union those together. So we've got fusion now. If we come into the original loft, which is down here, well, we don't have to do that. We have to come into this loft these are both the same, so you have a loft within the loft mirror and this loft here. If I click on this one, press the space bar, you can see they are linked. It's just the processes that this loft mirror has gone through to get to there. So if we come into the loft, we can see those sketches in there. If I click one, shift click, last one, press the space bar, we get rid of those sketches. And we can see we've got the boat shape there. So carrying on from this video, what we're going to do is look at the part design lofts. So we're going to create this object. I'm gonna span this object out to make this basically a video of all the techniques that we had before. So we've got pads, pockets, revolves, lofts, and we might add some grooves and sweeps in there. So we're reviewing all of those, but we're gonna be doing it from a part design workflow. So, if we look at the part design workflow, this is a more linear structure. And it's more easy to understand, but it's quite limited compared to what you can do in the part. It's traditional CAD processes. Part is much more flexible and allows you to work in a more organic way. You see, as we work down, we get this green icon here with the arrow pointing downwards. This is the last action. If I come into this additive loft, we can see two sketches here. And what I've done, if I hide that, I've hidden the body, let's hide this pocket. You can see I've added a sketch to the base and then added another sketch so it hovers above. And then we create a loft between these two with the additive loft. Because there's only two, it's gonna create a ruled loft between those. 
and the next video we'll actually build this from scratch and add some extra features on here so we can get an understanding of how all these tools work together in a part design workflow. We've been concentrating more on part. In the next video, we're going to be concentrating on the part design to create this feature. This can be created from the part as well. Very similar workflow, but we'll be using booleans to actually place those together, to union those together. In the part design, it's done all for you because you're only allowed a single body object. So multi-body objects aren't allowed in the part design. That means everything is fused together. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.